ladies and gentlemen, welcome. <clears throat> fantastic, fantastic. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this uh, virtual town hall. My name is Silburn Sidil from the UK here. I'm supporting and uh, being a part of this Access Jamaica UK. Access Jamaica UK, as you know, this is where the passport immigration and citizenship um, cooperation in Jamaica will be coming to the UK from the 3rd to the 4th October and also the 6th to the 8th. Now the 3rd to the 4th is going to be in Birmingham and the 6th to the 8th is going to be in London. Tonight, as a part of the, 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 the experience, I'll, I'll be having Mr. Uh, Andrew Winter, who is the, the, the um, CEO for the uh, Passport Immigration Control and uh, Mr. Mr. McFarlane as well. Uh, just getting the names right. Um, so Charlton McFarlane from the Registrar General, they're going to be uh, coming on the show tonight and they'll be uh, setting out what the whole agenda is about. And then around 7.30 or so, or when they're finished, you'll be able to have the opportunity to ask them any questions. There are many questions many people want to ask, like um, uh, what they need to take with them, the, the cost for the application, uh, can they bring a combo? Some of the questions I'm getting like, uh, can they, if they have a family of 10, can we have a special deal for a family of 10? So they will set out all of these things. And without further ado, I'm going to bring in first Mr. Andrew Winter, who is the Chief Executive Officer for the uh, Passport Immigration Country. Yeah, multitasking. Okay, yeah. Yes. Hi, good afternoon. Silburn, how are you doing? Good afternoon, Mr. Winter. How are you, sir? Nice seeing you. Um, yeah, man, I'm I'm fine. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much for hosting this um, town hall meeting for us, and we really yes. appreciate. It. I'd like to extend welcome to Mr. Charlton McFarlane, my fellow CEO for the Registrar General Department, who will be accompanying us on this journey to to the UK. As you said, we will be in Birmingham from the, on the 3rd and the 4th of October, and then London from the 6th to the 8th. Uh, just to bring, allow everyone to understand, the Access Jamaica is a diaspora initiative that has been launched by the Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency in partnership with our fellow public sector entities, Um, who are on private sector, who, well, who have been participating with us. This is an initiative which we have gone to the United States and to Canada. And this is where we actually take our various products and services for the agency to the Jamaican diaspora. We know many Jamaicans who live overseas from time to time want to access our services through the various missions, consulates, and embassies. And sometimes they have challenges by virtue of the distance, and they have challenges by virtue of um, the location where it's located and the operating times. So we decided that we will come up with a specific initiative that will assist the Jamaicans and make our access to our products much easier to the Jamaicans living in the diaspora. It's really our pleasure to come to the UK this time. I think we came to the UK around six years ago, but we are not. We never came on the scale that we're coming. We're coming with a full team of persons to accept passport application, passport renewal. Um, if you have lost or stolen passport, we will be able to process it. Citizenship applications, and unconditional landing applications from the immigration perspective. And I'm really happy to see that the RGD is joining us because many persons have issues with their birth certificate, marriage certificate, and any other certificates and clarification that they will require. And also VMBS, and I think in, um, another organization should be joining us. So it would be, it's really good to have these partnerships because the objective here is to provide our Jamaicans living overseas with access 
to our products and services that will allow them to come back to Jamaica and freely enjoy the country of their birth, in some cases by adoption. And we look forward to seeing how we can help you to access Jamaica. As I said before, the passport is the key to open the door back to Jamaica, which will allow you to come and enjoy educational facilities, recreational facilities, investment opportunities. So it's really our pleasure to come up with this initiative that will allow you, the Jamaicans, anywhere in the world, to be able to enjoy your country again. Um, Silburn told me yesterday that he has some Jamaicans living on the continent who yes. will also be coming to visit, and we look forward to seeing them come. So I encourage all of you to turn out in your numbers so that we will be able to provide you with these products and services in a one-stop shop situation. Okay, good. If, if I just um, just ask one of the key questions that, uh, uh, oh, ladies and gentlemen, what you can do as well is to ask your questions by putting them in the chat room. And you've got members of the organization, Passport Immigration Citizen Agency and Registrar General who will also answer your questions at the same time. Uh, Mr. Winter, one of the key questions people are asking, just to make sure they are not um, caught off guard, is what are the key documents that they need to bring if they are, let's, let's look at um, renewal of your adult passport or renewal of a passport. Well, I think I'll pass that question over to my Director of Customer Service, Mrs. Deli Vassal, who yes. is also joining me. So Mrs. Vassal, you're here to advise them on everything that they'll need to bring. Certainly, Mr. Winter. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, for We have two different categories of renewal um, passports. We will have those individuals who have a machine-readable passport, and there is no change to those passports. All we will need is for them to complete a simplified form and a copy of their, well, we will need their the passport that is being renewed. We also have the regular passport renewal, which means it can either be for a new applicant or for a child who's turning minor or for persons who are renewing and there are going to be changes. For example, they're, they're no married or they're divorced. Documentation will definitely need a copy of their birth certificate or their original birth certificate. That's why we have RGD on board. If it's a renewal, we will need to see the passport. So the passport has to be presented. If the passport is not available, it will be treated as a replacement uh, passport. We will also need them to complete the form in its entirety. We will have our notary public or our JPs present. So if they need that form to be certified, that can be done on spot. We will also need photographs. Again, we will have our photographers on spot and they can also um, get that photograph certified by our JPs. So just to sum up, original birth certificates and passport if they're doing a passport renewal. We will need a valid form of identification if it's a new applicant. If, however, the person does not have an ID, we will have facilities in place. We ask that the individual either take a parent or an older sibling who can verify their identity. We will have all the facilities available for persons who have no form of documentation to show ID or who does not have a birth certificate. So all those facilities will be provided for them. Thank you very much, Ms. Vassal. I tell you what I'm gonna do because I see a lot of questions being asked at present. So should I let Mr. McFarlane do, do his presentation and then we open it up um, for, for these questions because there's gonna be some overlapping there. So Mr. McFarlane, Charlton McFarlane from the, the Registrar General Department, if I can invite you to make your presentation, sir. Yes, um, <clears throat> thank you very much, um, Silburn. Thank um, you, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Mr. Winter, it's good to see you again, my friend. And to the members over in the UK who would have joined us, um, let me let me say good, good evening to you all. Um, the RGD is happy. We would have partnered with PICA in the past um, on a similar initiative. But I believe, well, certainly since my arrival, it's the first time we are going to the UK 
And I'm happy that we are covering, you know, the two major cities, Birmingham and London. Um, if I may just be allowed, um, Ms. Vassal, I don't know if, if you are the host to share my screen, um, I would appreciate that at this time. Thank you. And as I said before, anyone want to ask any question, just put your questions in and we will yes. be going to them. Some person may be responding to you directly, but we will yes. ask those questions and I'll make mention of them. Thank you. Excellent. So the, the RGD will be coming to provide essentially, you know, the services that, that we, we provide in office. Um, primarily, we will be accepting applications for persons who wish to apply for a birth certificate, a death certificate, a marriage certificate, or an, an adoption certificate, right? So all the vital certificates that we produced, um, persons will be allowed to apply for those products um, on the spot. In addition to that, um, and I think a service that we anticipate a high demand for is what we call our record updating services. And, and these are when um, the records have some amendments to be made. So we will be accepting applications for persons who wish to correct an error, right? Maybe there was an error, a misspelling of a name and a certificate. Persons will be allowed to apply for those corrections. Um, there are persons who have been issued a birth certificate in the past, but you know a surname may have been missing or there may have been no name at all. So we'll also be allowing persons to apply for what is called a late entry of name. Um, of course, persons will also be allowed to apply to add their father's particulars. And, and this is particularly important, especially for persons who wish to file for their, their, their kids um, locally, right? It, 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 it is imperative that, you know, both mother and father's name is on the birth certificate. So we'll be enabling persons to apply for those certificates. And we also will be accepting applications for what we call late registration. These are persons whose birth were never registered. Um, we, we, we can't find it in our repository. And these persons need to be regularized, at least locally. So we'll be applying, we, we will be accepting applications for persons who wish to do a late registration and also a re-registration. In addition to that, the, the RGD, we also provide recording ser services for, for deeds, for conveyances, for powers of attorney. And we know that this is something that members of the diaspora, they tend to, to use a lot of, especially powers of attorney, where they have persons in Jamaica whom they would have empowered or whom they wish to empower to do business on their behalf we will be um, accepting applications for persons who wish to record those documents as well. Another popular product that we will be offering um, when we visit the, the UK come next week is our genealogy service, which we have rebranded. We now call it the Outer Many Research, right? Um, this service allows persons to you know, look at their family lineage, um, as you know, at the RGD, we have a repository dating back to the 1600, right? And as such, persons can apply to the RGD and um, we will do the, the relevant research and allow persons to track their lineage and see who they may be related to, right? That's a very popular service that the, 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 the diaspora always demand um, in great volume. And of course, while we will not be you know, doing weddings on the spot, we will be promoting the fact that we do have a registered wedding product at the RGD. So if you wish to come down to Jamaica to, to, to get, get married at an affordable cost, the RGD provides that service. And in fact, you can stay in the UK and, and make your appointment online and just um, come down when it's time to say your I do's. So in summary, those are the, the services that we will be providing over the five days of activities in, in the, the UK. Essentially, everything that we do now locally um, in Jamaica will be taken to the folks in the UK. Thank, thank you for that. I, I find what, what was very interesting is the genealogy service, um, which you mentioned is a new service, isn't it? 
It's not a new service. It, it's, it's just a rebranded service. Mm -hmm. um, what it is, though, is a very popular service, especially for persons who live outside of Jamaica who want to trace their, their roots, you know, several generations down. And, and Mr. Mr. McFarlane, would people be able to have access to some of the prices before, like, before you come? So they can have an idea. Is there a way Absolutely. Um, absolutely. The, the, the price um, will, de will be dependent largely on the turnaround time that persons um, request yes. the service for. So for our seven day turnaround time, the cost is only 60 pounds. And for a ordinary turnaround time, which is a four week turnaround time, the cost there is 40 pounds. And that includes um, delivery of the, the documents after they are printed. Mm. Well, thank you very much, Mr. McFarlane. And if I if I go over more to questions now, I, I believe some may have been answered, but I'll just read one of them. Uh, will you be, uh, let me just say who it is from. It is from Charlene Winter. Will you be keeping the supporting documents that we submit with our application? For example, if I use my US passport as my form of identification, will I get it back on the same day? Asking because I have to, I have to have a flight and we leave my US passport. I think that's Miss Miss Passport. Oh, Hello? Yes, Hello? Yes, right. So oh, go ahead, Ellie. Oh, apologies. Yes, we will not be keeping original documents. We will be making copies of any documentation that is required. Uh, we have we do have a policy where no original documents are kept for the customers. So you will be um, your documents will be returned to you on the spot. Okay, so therefore your documents and that's one of the advantages, isn't it, Miss Miss Winter and Miss Vassal, whereby when you go to the the High Commission while they utilize your service, this is a one stop where you're giving first class service, isn't it, ASAP? With twenty five days turnaround. Is that it? Right, that is correct. That is and correct. the turn right, the turnaround yeah. time will start on the 12th of October. That is when the team returns to Jamaica to start processing the documents. Okay, fantastic. Um uh, if, I, if oh. I may um Silver, please, just to please. say the same thing applies um for persons who will be doing business with the RGD, we will not be needing to hold on to your documents. We will make the necessary copies on the spot and return the originals to the customers. Thank, thank you very much for that. Uh, Samsung um, said, I'm having an issue with misspelling of my father's name on his birth and death certificate that is stopping me from getting my citizenship. How can I overcome this issue? It seems like a, Mr. McFarlane, is this for you? Uh, or a double whammy? I don't want to say who is supposed to be. Yes. Yes. So, um, so, so that service would fall right in the category of what we call a correction of error. Um, mm -hmm. so, so if it is that the name of your father is spelled incorrectly on the birth certificate, that is something you can definitely come out um, when we arrive um, in the UK and we'll have it addressed. Um, just bring you know, the relevant supporting documents, such as your father's birth certificate, for example, a copy of his ID, whether a driver's license, passport, and stuff like, like that. And um, we'll review the documents and we'll make the necessary adjustments. Can I just ask, you know, those white papers, which we normally have, and you've got the blue ones now, if somebody have the white one, is that still valid or need to be transferred or, or changed to the blue, the blue one, sir, Mr. McFarlane? Uh, that's an interesting question. It yeah. is still valid, yes. Mm -hmm. However, we do encourage our customers to upgrade their birth certificate because and, and to have it now done on what we call the computer-generated paper, which is our security paper, which has certain standard features. Mm -hmm. and, and what that paper provides is greater credibility in terms of it not being as susceptible to fraud, it not being as susceptible to minor changes and so on and so forth. So while the, the older version of the birth certificate is still, um, you know, pretty much very, very much accepted, we do encourage our customers, you know, to upgrade to the more secured, more credible um, computer generated certificates. 
Another advantage of having the computer generated certificate is that, uh, and Andrew can, can attest to this, when the document is, when the birth certificate is presented to um, PICA mm. to, for, pros, for, for processing, PICA now, and, and the RGD, we now have an agreement in place where we do online and real-time verification of yes. those certificates. And that is only applicable to the computer generated version of the birth certificate. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for that, sir. And uh, Ms. Allen says, I tried to apply for a Jamaican passport, having completed an application form and having it signed by a JP in Jamaica. I took it to a tax office in Maypin that dealt with such, and I was told I had to have the document dealt with in the UK. I'm British, married to a Jamaican. Which application is a, is better applicate, application by marriage or descent? Yeah, which application is better application by marriage or descent? You guys might answer and understand that question. Right, so, so it depends. If she has a parent or a grandparent who is Jamaican born, then she would be able to claim her citizenship by descent. If not, and she's married to a Jamaican, then she would apply for citizenship by marriage, which can take up to 24 months. So it depends on what she has uh, in terms of her, her claim that she can apply for. Thank you. Going back to Mr. McFarlane, uh, when you mentioned, when we talk about the correction of the, date, the birth certificate and also my question, which I mentioned about the white paper and the blue paper, it is important that you guys are here with the passport um, service, isn't it? Because uh, Miss Miss Vassal, people are going to come with, to you with birth certificates, isn't it? And therefore, if there's an issue, they go to the RGD. Is that correct? Is that a fair statement I'm saying? You are correct. Yes. So therefore, or, yeah. Please go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. McFarland. So. Yeah. I think that was me saying. Go ahead. Yes, thanks. Um, so no, it makes perfect sense, you know, and, and, and that is why PICA and the RGD we tend to move hand in hand, especially in, in um ventures such as, as these, because literally um to apply for your passport uh, many times uh, um the the process requires an accurate birth certificate. You know what I mean? Sometimes, mm -hmm. depending on what you apply for, you, you need a marriage certificate as well. And so it makes perfect sense that the RGD is there to support PICA in this regard, right? And then sometimes what happens is that persons may go to PICA not realizing that there may be an issue on one of the certificates that they, they have, right? Mm -hmm. And so they would be sent back to the RGD to have that issue dealt with. So it makes perfect sense that in, in, in this in this moment, when they are sent back, they are really sent right over to us who will probably sit in across the table from PIGA. So it makes perfect sense. And, and that is one of the, the quality of the service what you guys are bringing now, whereby if someone goes to the High Commission in the UK or in the USC or whatever, when they put that forward, there might be some gaps which they cannot address there. But with this first-class service, I call it full on dread service, everything is done right there full on. Yes. So, so ladies and gentlemen, make sure you really tap into that. Um, uh, someone said, can we have our photo taken at the venue? You, you've answered that, Miss Ambassador. Yes, photographs can be taken at the venue. Is there anything special about the photographs? Is it the same typical thing like what we do in the UK when we go for, is it that people, what are some of the, 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 the faults or, or issues that you see when it comes on to the photographs? So people can be planning in advance. All right, some of the concerns with photographs that originate from the UK, one primarily would have been the size of the photographs. There are also some major issues. Sometimes the photograph is either too dark or there is glare in the photograph, whereas the person is too shine or the individual may have um, hair showing in their face, on their forehead. What we want is to have a perfect uh, replica of the individual's facial features. Um, if persons are smiling as well, that will not show their features correctly when it is run through our machines. So there are certain things that we will look for in a photograph. We will also take with us some of our key requirements for photographs so customers can see what they should be looking for going forward. 
um, and that will be on display throughout our, our offices for them to see as well. And, and what I would sort of encourage in, in for us here in the UK, in preparation for the third to the fourth and the sixth to the eighth, if we can get some of the sort of specifics, which I'm happy to share as well, so people can be prepared in advance, because I think your time is nine to four, isn't it? But for Birmingham and London, except for Saturday, which is also nine to four. Are that, well, yes, that four? We, we do advertise nine to four, mm -hmm. Mr. City Elf. However, yes. we do realize that there are customers who their time schedule might be a little bit um, different. And we do from time to time accommodate because sometimes we're there. We usually say that we work until the last customer leaves. Yes. And we try not to turn away our customers because really they are the person, they're the reason why we're coming. So yes. we, we do have to have a cutoff, however, because we're going to anticipate a crowd at any time. And that is really in, in cases where we have to say, okay, we, we need to cut. But we will be there, we will be working because we, um, we, we will be coming prepared to provide the service to the customers. Thank you, thank you very much for that. Uh, Cortez said, if I'm not able to attend any of the visits, can I ask my mother to attend and to apply for a replacement lost passport in London? I guess this is how can another person apply on another person's behalf? How do you how do you address that, Ms. Rasmus? Well, then, if it's if it's a lost passport, and Mr. Winter can support on this one. If it's a lost passport, the individual must be present because they will need to give an account of the circumstances surrounding the the lost passport. If, however, it was a situation of a renewal, then they would be able to give consent for someone to um, apply on their behalf. But once it's a lost passport, they will need to be present. Thank you very much. Somebody just messaged me, is a meeting going on now? I guess I need to send to them, yes. <laughs> um, I've been trying to send my applying for citizenship by descent. I need to, uh, what, what is this? I need, sorry, please ignore previous message. I, I, okay, I've been trying to send my correction of error application since February unsuccessfully. I, I, I must say, I, I read what this person said. I've been trying to send my correction of error application since February unsuccessfully. That is one person, but I know persons who have been saying they have been waiting to get things done. Uh, how do you address that? Even though I, I, I would say that you are here, so you can rectify things, but uh, what do you say to persons who are, who are still uh, waiting for things? Right, we, we do have situations like these on our events as well. What we usually make available is a, a, a checklist. If we're going up, for example, during a work day, we ensure that we have a direct connection to our office here in Jamaica, where we can check on the status of an existing application. I'm going to assume this customer has an existing application and needs to submit uh, additional documents or information. So if that is a situation, we will have a direct link to our systems here in Jamaica, where we can double check to see what exactly is outstanding. For the days when we will be working on a weekend and the access is not there, what we will do is to take the customer's name, information, and any additional documents that they were asked to take in. And when we get back into Jamaica, then we will check the application and process accordingly. If, however, again, there's still something outstanding, then we will have their contact information. So we will also have that facility in place for any additional documents or outstanding information based on applications that are already in house. Yes. And a uh, person also said, that I have no passport or other ID for my father who is now deceased. Yes, we will. <laughs> right, we will have our senior member. Some senior members from our team will be there, Mr. Sidiel, and yeah. they will be addressing and tending to these customers. So everything we will be, we have taken into consideration, and we will be making all arrangements to facilitate them. Uh, the individual will have to go to an advanced review process based on the fact that there is no ID. We will go through a series of interview check to see what can be done to facilitate the customer. So we will have that arrangement in place. And uh, I say to everyone, uh, I believe this question came up last night when I was with Mr. Um, Winter. If I'm unable to attend any of the days in the UK, can my relative in Jamaica assist me in getting citizenship for my children and spouse that are born here in the UK? 
I'm trying to see if I can understand that question. Yeah. If I'm unable oh. to attend any of the days in the UK, so they're saying they can't attend any of the days in the UK. Well, for the citizenship, if the spouse is here in Jamaica, they can apply for a citizenship if it's a minor. But when it come on to the passport for the child, the child will have to appear in person. So it depends on where that child is. If the child is here in Jamaica, mm -hmm. then it can be done. If, however, the child is in the UK, then the spouse here in Jamaica can only apply for the citizenship. Yeah. Yeah, I said no to spouse. So, they're all in the UK. Go again, Mr. Sidio. They're uh, saying I'm just I'm just responding. They're, they're saying the spouse is in the UK. They're all in the UK. The spouse in the UK. Well, the spouse can take the children to the event because remember we're having our combo package where if they apply for citizenship, they can also apply for passport on the spot. Yeah. So the the children or the minor they can come along with the spouse and they can get all their um both citizenship and passport um submitted at the same time well, well th thanks for that um uh, ladies and gentlemen keep asking the question uh in regards to your cash service or or card service what is the best way of payment for persons so they can be prepared in advance the method of payment will be cash mm. And that's what we've been uh, promoting. Uh, we will have a cash I payment facility. Uh, Ms. Mr. Winter said an international money order, ladies and gentlemen. So we're yeah. so cash is the only way for now. That's what you're saying. Well, they have the option of as of getting a, a, a an international postal order as well. We realize for more. Um, previous expose that uh, majority of our persons prefer to submit the cash over the money order, but that is still an option. Cash or the international money order and the money order or postal order has to be negotiable um, outside international borders. One, one person, um, uh, this is maybe for the future because I know persons are saying, um, Sid Byrne, I'm disappointed, I'm in Leeds. Another person say they are in a, um, we call it Liverpool. They're in Bristol. <laughs> um, are there plans for those other places? It's the winter. <laughs> We do have a, a, a diaspora engagement uh, committee, Mr. Sidiel, and we yes. usually assess the market. We assess the, the locations mm -hmm. to see where is most um, suitable based on the need. And we do have an annual plan. So once we have uh, gone to the table to look at where we want to go next for the next financial year, then that will be communicated. And uh, I go back to the money bit again. I know we mentioned money trans international transfer, but can they do bank transfers? Suppose someone is thinking in advance now, we got what, two weeks ago to third to the fourth and the sixth to the eighth. Is there a facility where there can be some transfer, money transfer to Jamaica, to you mm. guys? Just mm, ask. Not throwing it out, but at, at the moment, it is not an option on the table based on the limitations um, that we are faced with in terms of doing these type of transactions overseas. And that is why we, um, for now, we can only accept cash. Um, but as I said, it's still something that is being discussed, but it's not a confirmed, um, it's not a guarantee that we will be um, having that facility available. Uh, that facility won't be available for the um, yeah, right, right. Um, That is something considered for the future. So maybe sometime next year we will be implementing that. Mm -hmm. But as you know, the international banking regulation in terms of crossing borders and merchant payment system are very distinct and the banks do not readily facilitate. So we're currently in discussion with a major bank to mm -hmm. put some facilities in place. But unfortunately, that won't be ready for us by the time we come to the group. Well, th that is really helpful, Mr. Winter, because based on the interest and how this is going, more than likely you will have to maybe have some permanent fixtures on the UK soon to support High Commission as as well in regards to this. I, I, I do want to ask a question, though, in, in regards to the, the service that you do. You know, like when 
you, you have other persons who are coming with you as well. I know Mr. McFadden is here and, and you're some Mr. Winter or some of the other uh, partners that you're having. Well, we should be joined by VMBS and um, International Diaspora Services should be joining us as well, yeah. which is yeah. a small organization which helps to facilitate transaction like with a tax office and their government entity. So they'll also be joining us in the UK as well. So um, the, as we go on each um, event, this time we're joined by RGD. The next time we come to the UK, we might have the good fortune of having TAJ and RGD and ourselves there mm. and another government entity. We might also have a presence from Jamaica Tourist Board, yes. you know, to assist, you know, certainly for, from a tourism perspective to encourage the Jamaicans to come back and enjoy the, the lovely hotels that we have out here. Yeah. It, it's very interesting because, um, you know, the advantage because, and I presume that is going to be one of the, the services by VMBS and Integrated Diaspora to show that just getting the passport is one thing, but there's, it opens mm -hmm. this wonderful opportunity. It's a gateway. I don't know if you guys can sell the gateway to a, a third generation Jamaican gonna get their citizenship or someone finally getting their, I know a person who own houses in Jamaica and have tearing cards and finally they're gonna get a Jamaican passport. You know, So what is the message that you'll be sending to persons getting a passport? What does it open them to the opportunities, sir? And this is to Mr. 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 McFarlane, Mr. Um, Winter and also Ms. Vassal. You guys can send, uh, uh, send Jamaica. Hello, Mr. I don't know, Mr. McFarlane, to go first and <laughs> thank, thank you, Mr. Winter. Um, it's it's good that you allow me to go first. I guess because um, when you think about the the natural progression of things, the the, the birth certificate comes in um, first. I you know I I would say so. At the RGD, we we refer to the birth certificate as the well, we call it the breeder document, but essentially what it is, it, it is the first real public document that you get, right, um, as a citizen of, of, of a country, right? And so the birth certificate, it really serves as a facilitator for entry into the wider um, social services. You need your birth certificate for your passport. You need it to get your TRN. You need it to, you know, for entry into school right all of those things so really and truly and not only that that's just to do business with the government you also need a birth certificate to do um, business with the private sector as well right so what the birth certificate opens up is entry and access into these other services that you require throughout your life right so that is why the, the birth certificate is considered to be fundamental um as you progress through your life course. So the, from the passport perspective, now we know many Jamaicans who live in the diaspora. They want when they come back to Jamaica, sometimes they don't want to know that we're here for those six months. They want that ability to stay here as long as they want. Well, some of them want because they're you now <laughs> setting up businesses. No. And some I will dare say when they go to the various <laughs> tourist shop. attractions, when they show the Jamaican passport, yeah. well, they get to pay the local the rate and not the overseas <laughs> rate. A um, <clears throat> but the other thing that it does for us is that many persons when they want to start businesses. The requirement is they have to have two forms of identification and your passport and your driver's license is allows you that ability. Some persons want to go to university or the children want to go to university and this will allow them to also access education and facilities. The persons want to vi visit various countries in Africa. Yes. They are able to visit those countries because of their Jamaican passport without any visas. Additionally, persons might want to represent the country in sports or other events. And these things will provide, the passport will provide them with that opportunity to come and represent the country in many different ways. Mm -hmm. So one of the things it also does is, you know, for the 
second, third, and fourth generation, the generation since Windrush, even up to the fifth generation. These persons now, it can help to reestablish your linkage with the country. Because you now have your Jamaican passport, you're welcome as a Jamaican, you enter the Jamaican society, and you're able to participate in full in the Jamaican um, way of life, whether to do business, um, to participate, work with the government. You know, you, for example, a doctor in the UK, she might want to come and work in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. And she comes with her Jamaican passport and she works in the hospital. And she's able to get involved and get the job without any issues. So there are a number of advantages which persons which are there by having. As I said, the, the passport is your key that yes, opens that door to Jamaica. So when you come to Jamaica now, you're able to play an active role because one of the things the government of Jamaica is doing is asking how can we better engage Jamaican diaspora. Yes. Right? The Jamaica diaspora has a wealth of knowledge, information, which can assist this country to grow and prosper. Mm -hmm. So if you have your passport, which helps you now to do that much easier, then certainly, we are happy to know that we are providing that facility to you. Yeah. I mean, a lot of Jamaicans, the third and fourth, they want to get into the music and entertainment industry. And this will also help them to become part of it and get involved in it. And, and Mr. Winter, just to show my age, from 2004, I've been involved with the Diaspora Conference when it started with Delano Franklin. And one of the things that I brought to the table was overseas voting, but we're not going to touch that yet because many people say, when you get a passport, can you vote? I know there's issues in Jamaica in dealing with that point. I won't touch it, but that is something. Well, <laughs> you, you have to be registered in Jamaica in a constituency to vote. Yeah, we, yeah, we, yeah. we haven't reached countries like Estonia yet who have the <laughs> extended vote of the US that you can have the mailed in vote. Yeah. But even then, you still have to be registered in the country on yeah. the voters. In a to vote. Yeah. But I will leave that to the EOJ to provide more answers for you. No, no problem. I, I want to, there's a few more questions, but I want to just um, tidy up the, the different passports, the different services that you're going to have. And I don't know if Miss, uh, yes, I know Miss, Miss Bassett can actually put it up for persons there with the different services. So we can just run through them again so people know exactly what are the services which is going to be there and the cost for it certainly i will mr mcfarlane can you please allow me screen share yeah so and Ms. Fassi, if you want to take that take that bit there and go through the different services with their cost there yeah. okay sure are you able to screen share because i had stopped Oh, you need to give me back host. All right. So while I wait on Mr. McFarlane, we will be um, facilitating applications for our various categories of passport, whether it's a new renewal or replacement. Someone had asked a question about a replacement. Yes. We will also be facilitating citizenship by descent and citizenship by marriage. We also will be providing services of a photographer. We will have our photographers on spot. Mm -hmm. And we also will have our JP, our notary public. Uh, one of our key services that we will have is the option of convenience, where customers will receive their passports or their citizenship documents delivered right to their door. So whichever address is placed as their mailing address, it will be shipped directly to their address. So we will be offering courier services as well. In addition, we will have unconditional landing and that, Mr. Sidiel and customers, that is for individuals who for, what, for whatever reason, cannot get a citizenship, mm. although they're qualified. And instead of getting a citizenship, we will put an unconditional landing in their passports, their foreign national passports. That will grant them the option where when they come to Jamaica, they're landed as a Jamaican. So there's no condition in terms of how long they have to stay. They're treated as a Jamaican when they enter our ports. So we will be doing passports. We will be doing citizenship. And we will also be doing unconditional landing. We will be offering photography services. And we will ha have our notary public, or JP, that's free of cost. Mm. And we will be offering courier services. Uh, uh, thank, thank you for that so much. And ladies and gentlemen, you see the cost right beside those. Um, 
new adult passport, adult 110 pounds, renewal new children passport, 90 pounds, lost, stolen, damaged adult, 160, lost, stolen, damaged children, 110, citizens by descent, 120, citizens by marriage, 215, unconditional landing, new 80, unconditional landing transfer of 40. Can I just ask a question? And somebody said that to me in a, in a message, not now. And I said, I bring it up. I bring it up here. I have five children for argument's sake. And those five children are born here and the parents are Jamaicans. The, 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 is, is there gonna be a, a special price because of the fact that, will they be getting separate letters and separate, um, what should I say, parcels delivered or can it be going one package to reduce some level of cost? I, I throw that one out there. I don't know who can answer that one yeah. Well, each, each member of the family will be treated as a separate application. And what I mean by this, if one of our one of the child decides to apply for a citizenship by descent and a passport as a combo, yeah. we can ship both documents back to them. Yes. If, however, we have more than one family member, we cannot ship the documents directly together because if for whatever reason, one application is missing documents or information and there is a delay in the process, the delivery of the entire family's documents will be delayed. PICA has a guaranteed turnaround time and we will not be able to hold a document based on another applicant's document who is, who is basically holding it up. So what we do is treat each applicant as a separate um, delivery or courier service. Yes, thank, thank you for that. Um, SA, we say the question has not been answered. Why have they been difficult? I'm going to, I believe I know SA. So do you guys mind if I ask SA to come to me and I can get him to speak to you guys? Um, <laughs> Miss Vassal? <laughs> yes. Because, yeah, because um, there's a lot of, I think um, it seems a bit complicated with the family bit there. So uh, yeah, so I'm gonna try to get that to happen. Uh, Miss Atkinson said, and, and ladies and gentlemen, we've got about 15 minutes, 14, 15 minutes. So I'll just run through some last questions. Sure. Uh, our mother wants to know the following. Her name on her birth certificate is spelled incorrectly. However, the British citizenship, British passport and expired Jamaican passports are all in the correct name. Can she apply for a Jamaican passport with her expired Jamaican passport? I think I know the answer, but I'll let you answer that. Mr. Sidel, I, I didn't hear. I don't know if Mr. Winter heard that one. You want to repeat the question? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> her mother wants to know, Ms. Atkinson, her mother wants to know is that her name on the birth certificate. So the questions are coming. So it's, it's got pushed back. Let me get it back mm -hmm. there. Her name on her birth certificate is spelled incorrectly. However, the British citizenship. British passport and expired Jamaican passport are all in the correct name. Can she apply for a Jamaican passport with her expired Jamaican passport? This is the, the lady who's talking mother. Right. Uh, okay. What? Well, it depends if it is, a, it is one of those very old blue book, mm. one of those hardcover books. We are going to need the original certificate, birth certificate, because we treat it as a new application, even though it's a renewal. We ask for documents as if it is a new application because the features and everything on that particular customer would have long gone. So if it's one of the very old books, we will need the original birth certificate. Bear in mind that RGD will be right next door who can facilitate that. If, however, it is one of our machine readable passports, there will be no need to submit a birth certificate. What we will do, however, is just to verify within our system that the name that is being presented is in fact the exact name in our database with the previous information. So in this situation, it depends on the type of passport that is being renewed. And, and what she said, she gave the example, example, Valerie is spelled Valerie. Valerie is spelled Valerie. So it has a difference with the A and the E there. Uh, uh, I go further. Uh, I heard someone can get citizenship via marriage, even if divorce. Is that true? Someone can get citizenship via marriage, even if divorce. 
I'm going to ask Mr. Winter to answer that one. I've never had a situation like that. Mr. Winter, do you want to take on that one? That's in precedent here. <laughs> yes. Um, could you repeat some of this? Yeah. The person said, I heard somewhere that one can get citizenship via marriage, even if divorced. Um, not that I'm aware of. Once you, you're, you're, if the basis of your application for citizenship was on the basis of marriage, once you're no longer married to the Jamaica, yes. then you will be able to get your citizenship by that route. Mm -hmm. um, in the case of Jamaica, if the person is living in Jamaica and has lived there for more than five years, Yes, and they were married to a Jamaican and they have subsequently divorced that Jamaican, yes. they would be able to apply for citizenship by either as a commonwealth citizen by registration or as a non-commonwealth by naturalization, having lived in the country for five years or more. Yes. That is the only circumstance which I'm aware of. Or if the person has citizenship by descent, by their lineage, then whether or not they are married to a Jamaican, they will be able to apply in Jamaican citizenship. Mm. Those are the two circumstances which I'm aware of. But if the person is deceased, they can no longer apply on the basis of marriage for yes. citizenship by marriage. Yes. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I just need to let you know, I'm seeing some duplication of questions there. Um, Ms. Vassal will confirm that this is going to be taped. It has been recorded and will be going up on the YouTube channel. What, what I can recommend, Mr. Sidel, yes. in the interest of time, yes. I can put the email address where the questions can be sent to because yes. we will not be able to answer all these questions. Exactly. Um, so I'll put an email address and those questions can be filtered to that email and we will respond to your request. Exactly. And I'll just touch on this last one. I've already submitted info for citizenship and passport. Visited the embassy in Jamaica two weeks ago and was told the reason why paper not processed was because my mother's maiden name missing at E. Birth certificate amendment now sorted. And I was told I can give it to someone at one of these events to check and take back to Jamaica. Can I do this? Right. That is that's what I had indicated before. Yes. Once there is a document outstanding or information outstanding, we will accept that and take it back to complete the processing. Yeah. Prices quoted are different from advertised costs. I think Mr. Winter addressed that last night, but you can address that again, either Ms. Ms. Bassett or Mr. Winter. And 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 the price they're talking about on the jam the jam website, the Jamaica High Commission website. Right, the prices will be different, um, Mr. Sidiel, because on our High Commission website, those are those costs will not include delivery. We would have indicated on the flyer that the additional is a representation of the delivery cost because yes. each passport, each citizenship certificate will be shipped back to the customer. So we will include the delivery costs in those fees. And, and someone asked about replay. Yes, you're gonna be a replay of this, it will be taped. I'm apply. I'm happy to apply. I am applying for the first time. What documents do I need to bring? Mother old passport and birth certificate. I think it's gonna be a recurring question, isn't it? Right, and I'm also going to put our web address because when you yes. go onto the link access, I'm um, sorry, pika.gov.jm, yes. you will see the banner for Access Jamaica to register. Once you select that link to register, you will see below it a list of documents, depending on the service that you're um, that you will be applying for. So if you are applying for passport, you will see a list of all the documentation that you'll need to take in. So, um, Mr. Sidiel, I will um, take the liberty of putting our web address yes. and ask that persons visit the site to register. And we will also have a list of documentation that they can take with them. I have to ask this question. Um, someone said they, they're waiting a response, could have missed it. I'm still awaiting a response to the following. I'm in the process of getting a late entry to my late mother's birth certificate, which has been difficult because I wish to get my passport and citizenship by descent. Will I be able to complete the late entry and apply for a passport and citizen on the day? Mr. McFarland and Ms. Ben, Ms. Vassal and Mr. Winter, I show that one to you guys. <laughs> 
All right. Um, so the, <coughs> the late entry of name is not a same day processing. Um, so uh, um, for sure, um, the application can be done on the day, right? But the, 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 the processing will not be completed on the, the day, right? Um, that's one. Mm -hmm. However, um, I saw also where the customer would have said that they tried to send that document to us, indicating that they would have started the process some time ago, but the, the email you know, keeps bouncing. Um, but I, um, the RGD actually allows for persons to apply for late entry of name online. Mm -hmm. And so if the individual can actually go online and do the application via the online process, they will be able to upload the supporting documents, yeah. right? And if they can do that, then it will speed up the process um, of the application. Thank you very much. Um, ladies and gentlemen, um, there are a lot of questions which are showing here and uh, people are asking about where, where I'm happy to facilitate to for this to be placed on my web, my YouTube channel as well, Ms. Bassett, but where can people see the replay? Um, so I will send you the link um, yeah. as soon as it becomes available. And yeah. you, we will also have it on our social media pages. Yeah. So persons can visit our Facebook page or YouTube channels and they will see the link as well. So the recording. Yes. Yeah. And uh, um, one of my children has unconditional landing through their Jamaican father my ex-husband, am I able to get the same stamps for my daughter in her new passport and for the other children? I have his birth certificate, no, no contact with him for legal reasons. I'm planning to get my citizenship through descent, by the way. That sounds like more than one question being yes. asked. <laughs> yes, yes. So, so I, I guess on the day, you're going to have cases where persons are going to come and um, you got to sit them down and have discussions, isn't it? Yes, because asking a question here is much different from yes. looking at a document because yes. um, when you see the document, then you can know exactly what this um, customer can receive or what is outstanding or how you can advise um, for questions fed like this. Unless it's a direct question, it may tend to be a, a, a little difficult to respond effectively because not all the information would have been available. So what I would recommend as I, I place the email address yeah, in our just, chat, you can submit your questions there and our, one of our representatives will make contact with you and try to respond to your questions as uh, efficiently as possible. We may have to um, divulge for additional information and probe, yeah. but we will try our best to assist as best as possible. And would you give me um, the permission to even say this? That I would encourage persons with questions, and if you're planning to go there, either between the third and the fourth in Birmingham or the sixth to the eighth, do email and ask those questions. So you, therefore you're armed and ready to go with all the relevant information. Am I correct? Ms. That's correct. That's you're correct. correct. Yes. And finally, can I have a last word from Mr. McFarlane and Mr. Winter as we wrap up? Um, you know, any last words that anything you might miss that you want to share, sir, before we wrap up, sir. Mr. Winter. No, I think we have covered it all. This has been a very good town hall meeting. I hope that all the persons we have answered their questions as best as possible, but we will be there shortly. So, and we're coming with a full team to mm -hmm. deal with all and every eventuality that we might have. So I look forward to working in the UK and providing you guys with this, this service. Mm -hmm. And I know you'll be coming out in your numbers to yes. ensure that, you know, we, you, we we're able to provide as much of you with the support that you so desire. Definitely. Thank you very much, Mr. Winter. Much appreciated. And Mr. McFarlane, sir? Yes. Um, thanks again for, for you know, giving us this opportunity and this tone all. I think some good information was shared. And similar to Mr. Winter, I just want to encourage persons to come out in your numbers. Look out for the days when we'll be in Birmingham and when we, we'll be in London. We will have a full team ready and waiting to serve you um, with 
you know, all the services that you need from the RGD and from Pika. So thank you again, Silver. And, and uh, thank you very much. And uh, I, I can answer it, but someone just said, what does RGD means? You can <laughs> it is the Registrar General's Department. Um, you know, a lot of people will just call it the birth paper place. Yes. Right. Yes. But it is the Registrar General's Department because we do so much more than just yes. um, printing birth certificates. Yes. And, and PICA means Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency. Is that a good representation, Ms. Vassal? Am I correct there? You are correct. You are, you are indeed correct. Fantastic. So I should be an agency for you guys here. <laughs> Somebody just asked a question, and I just repeat it again. October 3rd to 4th in Birmingham, that's where they will be. And that's going to be at the Legacy Center of Excellence, 144 Potters Lane, Birmingham, B6, 4UU, United Kingdom. And October the 6th to the 8th, 2022, uh, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., St. Mary's Center, Lewisham, Ladywell Road, SE 13, 7 UW. Um, and all the information is out there. The PICA, web, the PICA Facebook page will be up, updated with more information as well. And I'll also be pushing out more information leading up to the event coming up very soon. Thank you very much. Is that fair enough? Are we okay now, Ms. Vassal? Yes, yes, we are. So ladies yes, and gentlemen, thank, thank you so much for joining and remember to share and um, please utilize the email address as well. Um, that is very important. Have a good night and thank you very much. All the best. Bye-bye. Good night.